task to seek this grail. That is your purpose, the quest for the Holy Grail. Hello again, whiskey tippers and spirit sippers. Welcome back to this rookie's walk through the world of whiskey. And today we caught up with another one. Today it's going to be all about the Glendronic 18 Alderice. Some scotch. Single malt. Aged 18 years. The way I like it. Uh, I gotta be honest, I, I, you know, I just started this. The Giant Tamer hooked me up with the Game of Thrones collection last Christmas and just been walking through this world of whiskey all year long. And it just, I don't know what it was, but you know, there's that one that just calls out to you even though you know nothing about it. And through the thousands and thousands of videos and whiskeys I've been hearing all about and all the comparisons and all the suggestions I've been hearing, for some reason, the Glendronic 18 has definitely been one I've been wanting to taste. This is just the one that stood out for some reason. I cannot believe it's taken this long for me to get to it, to review it. But this and the Yamazaki 18 are the two I've just, for some reason, been the most excited to try. And today we're absolutely going to get to try it. Let's crack into this bad boy. Uh, up here it's about $189 uh, before tax. I actually grabbed this one while I was down in Vegas at Total Wine because I saw it for $167 down there. So I figured why not save the $22. And of course now that it's right before Christmas, our Costco's have it right around here going for $140, either $143 or $147 out the door. So probably going to be running out and grabbing another one. We'll see how good this one tastes. But yeah, I am super excited to taste the Glendronic 18 out there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my god, you have no idea. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's always called out to me. Um, it makes a lot of people's best of, you know, whiskeys you gotta try before you die, and best whiskeys of the year, and best whiskeys of all time. And as most of you know, um, this juice, this is like the last year, but it's not even 18 year old juice in here. This is actually like 20 or 21 year old juice in here because the distillery is mothballed for a while, meaning they kept it all the juice inside but they closed it down for like six years so then when they opened it back up there's a cup there's kind of that six year dead area and it always has to be the age on it has to be the youngest whiskey in there and they didn't have any 18 year stock for that six years so they actually had to put older stock in the 18 years so actually getting quite the deal and i think that's might be one of the reasons why i'm so excited to try this because you know you're getting always love a good deal and you're getting a lot you know older whiskey than what you're paying for and Oh, I just heard this one is the way to go, so I'm excited to try it. Let's pop it. Oh, beautiful cork pop. Beautiful. Let's get that pour. Pour a nice healthy one in here for this one because I definitely want to make sure we get plenty of taste testing on it. Oh, I'm excited for this. But, you know, no matter how excited we get, you know how we do it. It's going to be, uh, it's an 18-year whiskey, so we're going to let it air out in this glass for 18 minutes, and then we will definitely get right back to it. See you in a sec. Well, we're waiting. All right, it's been 20 minutes. I let it go a couple extra minutes because, like I said, the juice in here is a couple years extra older, or a couple years extra older, a couple years older than the 18. It's actually more like 20 or 21, so I wanted to give it that extra time to air out. But, oh, man, as soon as I came back and sat down, it was just like, you could smell just, you can still just smell it in the air. I mean, this is so potent. I can't wait to get into this. Oh, what's it smell like? Oh, wow. I was thinking it was going to be super kind of fruity. I knew it'd be a little more tamped down, but this has a, just a tiny bit of mustiness to it, like a funk berry mustiness. Oh, it's not often that I get that leather note that a lot of people get, but I'm getting that leather note in this one. Oh, man. This one is, uh, they're exclusively matured in Oloroso casks. Only top quality casks are used for this uh, dram, and I think it's going to shine through in the taste. I gotta tell you, the aromas are exploding. Like I said, as soon as I came over and sat down, like before I even sat down, you could just smell it in the air. Like, oh wow. Yeah, I think this is definitely older than 18. Oh my goodness. It just has like a real rich leather, dark, dark, deep berry. And when I say funk, I mean, there's, I mean, it's just the tiniest bit of mustiness on there. Not anything displeasing or, you know, it's not anything unsavory at all. It's just, it's just there. <laughs> like another profile. 
oh, there's like a sweetness now, and like a sweet honeysuckle of honey in the background now. Like a flower, but like a like a wild flower. Not like roses or anything, but like some crazy wild flower that has like a real pungent, flowery, deep flowery smell. If that makes sense. And yeah, like I said, that leather note's definitely there on that. Anybody that was younger and played baseball chewing on their mitts, I heard somebody say that the other day. That's a great, there are people like, how do you know what leather tastes like? It's like, if you're a kid and you chewed on your baseball bit, you have like that leather note, you know what they're talking about. Oh man, and just a lightness too. I mean, this is so complex. Well, I can't wait any longer. Like I said, this is the one that's been calling to me. I've been more excited to taste this one than pretty much anyone out there. It is finally time to get it in. Kumpai. Oh, oh, oh. Not too shabby. Oh, wow, it's still... Ooh. It's like rolling. It's still going. It was like an explosion. It's still going. <laughs> wow, the mouth is watering. Ooh, I was so... Wow, it is still going. <laughs> it is just... It's, it's like a rolling effect. It like started in the mouth, just kind of just all kinds of flavor explosion, berries and juices and that leather note, and, oh, like a wildflower, and then you swallowed it and you kind of felt it. it didn't burn going down the throat, but you felt it, and then it was just this rolling effect down and rolling back up, and it's just constantly going and building, and like I say just berries and leather and a tiny bit of mustiness and the, like a wildflower. I mean. Like a wild purple flower, I can't really, like an iris maybe? Um, it's hard to explain, but it's just this real dark, savory, pretty smelling note that tastes amazing. And there is, there's, what's that? there's something behind that leather too. I've tasted that in another whiskey and I can't remember which one it was. Is it the compass box? Well, there's something in there. It might be, it might just be being in that Oloroso uh, sherry cast for that long. You know, if it's been in there for 20, 21 years, it could just be that. But there's just this super savory note right on the back side of the leather note that's just very intoxicating, if you will. Oh man, that's good. Man, there's this flavor that I've had before that I just cannot put my finger on right now. Man, I cannot tell what that is, but it's like salty, sweet, savory all in one. I mean, it is. That is really good. <laughs> I was so afraid that I was going to hype this one up. Like I said, other than the Yamazaki 18, this is the one that I've been looking forward to tasting the most out of all the whiskeys I've heard about, all the things I've been watching and learning about. For some reason, no idea why, this is the... Glendronic 18 Allardyce is a really one to taste. I've heard so many great things, the way everybody explained it. It just felt like this is going to be right up my profile, my taste profile. And I'll tell you what, it really is. This is so good. I wish I could pinpoint that flavor, though. I've had it before. And it's just rolling. Like I say, you get like a bit of a leather flavor and then the savory, salty, sweet note that comes rolling in right behind it. But man, that's amazing. It's almost like I want to say like a savory steak, but it's not that. But boy, I bet this will go good with a steak. But it's that kind of just sweet, savory, salty deliciousness. Yeah, this is really good. Oh, I was so afraid I was going to pump this up and it wasn't going to live up to what I thought it was. But this is amazing. Let's put just a little dash of water in it and see how it holds up. Just a couple drops of water in it. See how it holds up. See what we can open up. Well, I tell you what, so far I need it was so good. I don't even know if water makes it better. I'll be blown away because that was delicious. <laughs> Man, so far, so what have we done? We've done the 12, uh, the 10 Portwood, the 15, and now the 18. And I just went out tonight and happened to find another one that will be coming up. Another Glen Jonix, so stay tuned for that one. This one, so far so good. I had a feeling it might be my favorite, and it, oh, it really is. I don't know the Glendronics and the 12. I didn't, I didn't know if I could beat it. The 12 was so good, but all that like 
that tart and that uh, that spiky prickliness that's that tiny bit that's on that bit it's uh it just has like that new taste on the 12 a little bit that's kind of there and uh, just missing just a little bit of oomph on the back side and not watered down but just a little thinner than it could be where this is as thick and viscous and vibrant as it could ever be I mean, this is amazing okay just put a little water in it let's see how it goes down cheers it smells a little sweeter. Um, those leather notes and that that funky mustiness with the water in there is gone. It's a lot. It's bringing out a lot more of the sweeter smells in this one. A lot of times you put water in it and you'll get it'll open up some of those barrel smells a little bit, but not this one. Sweet and instead of like just deep dark plums, berries, and this is more just kind of like the regular red cherries, cherries and raspberries with a little bit of honey on the back side of it. And I mean, that funk's there, like, boy, you gotta get in there and dig for it. It's there, but it's in the very back side of it. Ah, oh, all right, let's see how it tastes in water. Cheers. That flavor that I was talking about just came out in droves on the palate with the water in it. I wish, I mean, it's almost like a, I can say the best way I can describe it is like a big, juicy filet mignon steak, but, I mean, that's not quite it, but, it's just so salty, savory, just delicious. What is that flavor? The only thing that comes to mind, and it's not quite it, but it's like a big, huge filet mignon steak. It smells so delicious and rich. It's gonna drive me nuts until I can put my finger on exactly what that flavor is, but for now, we'll just call it delicious. Time to go into stage three and uh, see how it fares over ice. Oh, the Glendronic 18 is non-chilled filtered, natural color, so none of the funk fake, I'm not faking the funk in here. <laughs> it's the first time that I've got such a great pop out where the uh, juice actually lived up to it and was really good. That's awesome. Um, the Glendronic, this one is 46% uh, percent ABV, so you already know 92 proof, so right there in the fun zone. Let's get a pour. I can't imagine drinking this one over ice, to tell you the truth. It might be amazing. We will find out. All right. Oh, wow. Like a 50-50, like, sweet tartness. Just perfect savory. Mm, and again, I mean, is that just the Sherry Oloroso cast? But I just I cannot put my finger on that super savory note. Man, it is just there in droves again still. Actually, the colder it gets, the sweetness gets tamped down a little bit. More of a, you can tell more of the tartness and the barrels kind of a little more taken over. All right, I believe it's cooled down enough. Let's taste it. Prost. Oh, and that's definitely cooled down. Um, like with a lot of them, a lot more barrel flavors, barrel tannins, more of that wood note with the Oloroso sticking on the back side of it. But yeah, more of that. Spanish oak Oloroso um, cask flavor. That smells there, that real savory thing, note that I'm trying to put my finger on, it's there on the smell, but the taste is way tamped down. Yeah, the ice hides away too many of the flavors in this one. I do not suggest putting this over ice at all. Drink this one neat or with just a couple drops of water in it. Oh man, this is delicious though. that before it gets any more water down with the ice <laughs> and back to me where it should be mm. probably a scale of one to ten well, this is a neck pour and I know I need to spend a little more time with it because they all change so much but this is so good right out of the gate I mean it is definitely right there I think I definitely have to give this a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten definitely for this one um, Creeping up on a nine and a half. <laughs> this is so good, savory, and delicious. I mean, definitely gonna be spending some more time with this one, but this one's up there. This is definitely a good, strong nine, maybe even a little bit higher. Good, good. Style, I say, great stuff. So, yeah, uh, man, I've been so stoked to taste this one. I'm glad I didn't psych myself out and overhype it because 
This one was actually good enough to live up to the hype and uh, stood strong. This is absolutely delicious. If you see it, grab it. I know a lot of Costco's have it right now for a really great price. So if you see it there, get it. Uh, if you see it somewhere else, get it. <laughs> this is just a good dram to have on hand. Hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of the week. Stay tuned because there's going to be a whole lot more coming down the way. So until we see you next time, come by.